Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Extrude 3D node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and in Fusion, we've just got our uh, simple little setup here. We've got our camera and ambient light, a spotlight, merge node and a render node. So we're going to bring in an Extrude node. So shift space, Extrude 3D. And what the Extrude 3D node does is it allows you to extrude a shape within a Fusion. And you'll notice we have three inputs. This main input is for your 2D or 3D shape. This green input is for the material of your shape. And this pink input is for the bevel material of the shape. And I will get into that here in a second. Now, to be able to use our extrude, like I said, we need to input a shape. And our regular shapes, like our rectangles, don't work. So let's go ahead and delete that. So in order to use this, we need an S shape, which I know I haven't gone over yet, but shift space and type S. You'll see all these little shapes with S in front of them. So we can bring in, say, an S ellipse and add it. This is a different type of shape node, and these are the shape nodes we need for uh, 3D elements. And uh, I will eventually go all over all these uh, shape nodes. So all we have to do is input this into our extrude, and let's go ahead and stick our extrude node into our uh, merge, and we can see our little shape. And first thing we're gonna do is on our extrude node, we have a transform button. So this will help us transform our shape into three in 3D space. So we can move it back on our Z axis. So we can get it in the camera. And let's go ahead and bring up our render. And let's bring that back. We have a shape and I can rotate it. But, uh, let's go ahead and rotate it on the uh, Y axis. So within our transform node, we can translate it, rotate it, change our pivot location and change our scale. Just like on a, most other 3D nodes. Under the controls, we have two extrusion styles. One is classic and one is custom. And I'm gonna hit the classic first and we'll come back to custom because there's really only one other change to this. Now up top we have extrusion depth. So by increasing this, extrude the depth of our little shape. Our extrusion subdivisions allows us to add more subdivisions. So the more subdivisions you have, the smoother your curves are going to be. We have bevel depth, so we can add a bevel. But to be able to start seeing this, we need to add a bevel width. So let's go ahead and add a bevel width. Let's change our depth up there a little bit. So you can see we're starting to get this little bevel around the edge. So we can change that a little more if we want. And let me rotate it so you can kind of see what's happening. And if I change this depth up, you can see it's changing the depth of that bevel. Next, we have smoothing angle, and this just kind of smooths out the angle of our uh, bevel there. We can select whether we want our bevel in the front or not, whether we want in the back or not. And curve tessellation just, again, helps us smooth out that curve. And once I go too far, it's just going to go crazy and pop away. But if that's the look you want, that's the look you want. So let's swing this back around. Now under the custom node or the custom style, you get this additional graph. And this is what we use to uh, create our profiles of our uh, bevel. So you can see we've got our bevel there. And if I start adding points, I can change the look of our bevel. So based off this, this is how our bevel will look. And uh, we can change the overall extrusion depth or bevel width 
our angle and our curve tessellation. And under the material tab, this is where we use these inputs. Override the diffuse colors, which are our inputs, and we can select a color. So whatever color we want. Now, if we went ahead and brought in, say, a material into this, this is looking for an unwrapped material for this shape. And I know we haven't got to materials yet, but we will, I promise. But if we brought in just a typical image as a material, and let me just find one, I'll bring in my little logo again and input it into the green input. Now it is using that image as our material. So you can see our images in there <laughs> using that weird uh, bevel. So let me switch that back to classic. So you can see as we change our bevel, we change the look, we can change the extrusion depth. And if we go back here, we can uh, uncheck this override diffuse color. So it's only using the color of our actual input. And what this input is for is for importing the material for your bevel. And again, it needs to be unwrapped correctly for it to work. So if I go ahead and change this or move it so you can see the, the bevel, let's make sure we have a bevel. If I input this material into our bevel also, it's not going to do anything because it's not mapped to that bevel. And even if I disconnect this, you can see our bevel is not mapped. So when we go over textures, it's a little too much for this node breakdown. <laughs> when we go over textures, we will get into adding different maps. So these inputs work. So you'll know once we cover that uh, texture portion, exactly what to do with these inputs. But for now, that is the extrude node, and I will see you in the next node breakdown.